now it's unfortunate. Oh, and here we are, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Happy afternoon and evening, everybody, and welcome to another extra special episode of the Killer Author Club. You're going to love tonight's show, and we'll explain why we're wearing such things, because tonight one of our guests is our own killer, Kimberly Bell, and she's joined by her killer collaborators, Lane Fargo and Vanessa Lilly. Kate Hollihan could not be here tonight, but we'll, we'll fill her role in, too. All right. They are here to answer all of the killer questions about rich young widows out now in paperback and their new Audible original, Desperate Deadly Widows. Obviously, we have tons to talk about, so grab your cocktail and your list of questions for the killers, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thought you really loved me. Guess I was wrong. Thought you'd never leave me. Guess I was dumb. Waited like forever to be your first one, but I guess you were done. That's adorable. <laughs> you guys <laughs> surprised? I love the music. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you know we've got this 80 theme, 80s theme rolling. So hello to all your new members. We usually don't dress this way, but we're having fun tonight. And to all the OGs on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or wherever you're watching, we're so glad to have you here. I'm Killer Kara Ruda, and with me is Killer Heather, nope, the other way, Heather Gudenkopf. And we are so excited to be welcoming our very own Killer Kimberly to the clubhouse as our guests and her co-writers, Lane and Vanessa. We'll be talking all things Young Rich Widows and Desperately Deadly Widows and all things killing of the fictional kind. So, oh, and you guys drop your questions in the side scrolling box and we will try to get to as many as we can. So for now, Heather, could you please do the honors and introduce our guests? Heather, you're muted. Oh. <laughs> I tried to unmute her, but I couldn't do it. Sorry. There you are. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. We have a huge lineup tonight. So excited. So we've got Kimberly Bell. She's the USA Today and internationally best-selling author of suspense novels, including The Paris Widow, The Marriage Lie, um, a Goodreads Choice Award semifinalist for Best Mystery and Thriller, and the co-authored number one Audible original, Young Rich Widows. Her books have been published in dozens of languages, an option for film and television. Of course, she is also one of the founders of the Killer Author Club. And we have Lane Fargo, who writes dark, dramatic stories that support women's rights and also women's wrongs. She's the author of psychological thrillers, They Never Learn and Temper, and co-creator of the Unlikable Female Characters podcast on Lit Hub Radio. She lives in Chicago's Rogers Park neighborhood with a rescue pit bull and a cat who are best friends. The only man she never wants to murder, well, almost never and way too many books. Uh, Catherine Kate Hallhan is the USA Today bestselling author of The Widower's Wife, August 2016, Lies She Told, Dark Turns, and One Little Secret. She's a graduate of Princeton University and lives in New Jersey with her husband, two young daughters, and a sometimes good dog. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have Vanessa Lilly, the USA Today bestselling author of Blood Sisters, which was a Target book club pick and GMA book club buzz pick, as well as a best mystery of the year from the Washington Post and Reader's Digest. Her other best selling thrillers are Little Voices and For the Best. She hosts a weekly Instagram live show, Twas the Night Before Book Launch, where she chats with authors the night before their book is out in the world. Congrats to all of you and welcome. Thank you. You're so happy. You. We've been Yay. so so excited about this and we're going to dive into the books in just a minute uh, but for now can you give us an elevator speech for each one young rich widows and desperate deadly widows i think first we should bust kate because she's not here tonight for a really good reason <laughs> yeah we're jealous is, she's at is it olivia rodrigo at madison square madison garden, square garden. <laughs> My literary agent is there too. Shout out Sharon. Hope everyone's having a good time. Uh, <laughs> it's almost as fun as this, but, but almost. almost. <laughs> I, I told her, I was like, just call in from a bathroom stall. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Are you ready? So ready. we are ready. Young Rich Widows. It is 1985 in Providence, Rhode Island. 
A private jet carrying four partners of a Providence law firm crashes outside New York City, killing all aboard, but leaving behind more questions than answers and setting the stage for four widows to find the truth. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. So good. Right. And then the sequel. So once you're done with this little beauty, oh, thank you, Heather. Uh, mm -hmm. Desperate Deadly Widows picks up pretty a couple years after this one. So spoiler alert, all the main characters live. And they're having to run this law firm that was left to them by their spouses that blew up. And, you know, it and one of the widows, Camille, written by the Kimberly Bell, um, has started a honeypot for hire scheme business. Oh, sorry. She's here for me. <laughs> um, and she is um, on a job with the mayor of Providence in the back of a champagne room at a strip club. And he takes a sip and drops dead. And she's left holding the champagne. So literally. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, the widows have to band together and try to keep the law firm afloat while navigating Rhode Island politics and keeping Camille out of jail. So good. So, uh -huh. yeah. so much fun. We, we loved it. And so we have lots of questions for you. And a reminder, make sure everyone drop your questions into the comments um, so we can add them to our list. But first, it's time to talk about the episode special cocktail. Kara? You know, it is. And we've got a doozy tonight, you guys. So the killer cocktail, we have one or a mocktail every episode, as you guys know. And we've asked these guys to come up with their... Um, drink of the night, so to speak, and they chose Shady Champagne as their special drink. And um, want to tell us why? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Camille, um, she popped the cork, she poured the champagne, and someone dropped dead. So let's hope that this one is not poisoned. Right. <laughs> let's find out, Kim. All right. I'm going to drink it. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Oh, look, it's even a. Oh, wasn't even a cork. Uh oh, that's really shady. <laughs> <laughs> Did it crack? <laughs> it was a, a twist top. Uh, that's just not as exciting. Yeah. Cheers. Well, let's let, yes, cheers and congratulations. And let's just take a quick look cheers. at the special recipe. Cheers, everyone. So far, so that good, y'all. <laughs> quite the recipe. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so mm -hmm. the Killers and I started the Killer Author Club two years ago so that readers like you can interact with some of the best suspense writers in the biz. Our winter spring lineup includes superstars like Lisa Scatolina, uh, Scatolini, Kirsten Moglin, Rachel Hazel Hall, Sandra Block, CJ Box, and so many more. Dates, times, past episodes, and so much more can be all found at killerauthorclub.com. But tonight we're here to talk all about young rich widows and desperate deadly widows. Okay, so Geneva Rose, New York Times bestselling author, says an 80s romp with big hair and even bigger secrets. Grab your popcorn and settle in for this incredibly fun and twisty read. And we have from Tessa Weggert, almost impossible to stop seeing. If you're looking for an audiobook that's fresh, fun, and full of surprises, bonus points for being set in the 80s, this is it. <laughs> and finally, Hannah Mary McKinnon, internationally best-selling author of The Revenge List, says break out your crimpers and leg warmers because young rich widows will have you reliving the 80s in style. So ladies, you're obviously all highly skilled and accomplished killers. Now we need to know the answer to your question. Who do you kill? <laughs> well, um, 
It depends on the book, but we kill a lot of um, really bad guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mobsters, uh, cheaters, evil men doing really bad, evil things. Did I forget anyone? Oh, we killed, we did kill one woman. Yeah, we did. That's true. I feel a little bad about it. Even though she yeah, she wasn't that great either. <laughs> I never feel bad about killing the men. Uh, she was fun to write, though. She had a pretty, you know, no spoilers, but I mean, she's, let's be honest, she's naked in the scene. So yeah. <laughs> you're going to want to tune in for that. Yeah. I mean, we kill like four men and a woman right at the start of Young Rich Widows when the yeah. plane blows up. We're just dropping bodies immediately. <laughs> prologue or the opening of the book is uh, the plane crash. So yeah. I My um, thing that I like to kill that was a point of disagreement is semicolons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you yeah. also like to kill the ands and the butts. And I the, do. Yeah. When you start yeah, starting with an and or a but. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah, I really so like we, so you that. are you would be all over my manuscripts, Vanessa. I don't mind reading them, like in people's <laughs> books. It's very, it's a very personal choice, like underwear or deodorant. But <laughs> I just, I always just need to make sure we really need them, and so I'm really annoying about it. It's good advice. Yeah. Good and advice. it was just going from an audio book to print, even though it was written very similarly, I would say, just mm -hmm. a few kind of changes. Cause basically Young Rich Widow started out in audio and it was that way for almost two years before this. And so we had a chance to kind of read through it. And, you know, so I was like, do we need this semicolon? Do we need this semicolon? So I was very obnoxious. <laughs> you're, you're a grammar killer. I like it. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it. it just feels, you know, it's like, it feels different. Like there's some kind of a, I don't know, so. Yeah, Super cool. So you did. I mean, you knew when you were writing um, Young Rich Widows that it was going to be an audible project from the beginning. Yeah. So I imagine that you would approach it differently. And, yeah, we, and how, or how did you approach it differently? I should say. We thought a lot. I mean, you always think about voice and how something mm -hmm. sounds when you're writing, but we thought even more about that and. We also, and this was sort of like an edit audible hat that then we just ended up doing on our own, but not breaking up dialogue with like action tags or like he said, she said, just mm -hmm. having the dialogue. Um, so thinking more about like, what do you really need to know if you're hearing it versus seeing it on the page? And then of course, when okay. we did the paperback, we had to add some of that stuff back in. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. So why don't you introduce yourself? You know, we introduced you as authors. Now, can you introduce yourselves as the characters you wrote in the book? Tell us a little bit about who you play or who you emulate in the in the books. Okay. Who wants to go first? I'll go first because then I can show off my earrings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote Maybe. Meredith, who is a stripper, which that was like literally the first thing I said when Vanessa asked me to do this 80 set project. Can my character be a stripper? Yes. So I have to show off. These are my uh, stripper pole earrings. She goes up and down the pole. <laughs> That's a business expense right there. That's tax deductible. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Yeah. Um, Meredith's very like street smart, financially savvy. Like she's a business bitch, you know. Um, so that was really fun to write in the context of the 80s. There's there's so many great, I mean, you've got like Working Girl and I mean, all the, the shoulder pads, the business suits, all that stuff. And in Desperate Deadly Widows, she meets a character who has the nickname the She-Wolf of Wall Street uh, and gets some, some business tips from her that like may or may not be <laughs> morally sound um so that was a lot of fun to write just uh, thinking about like what it meant to be an ambitious woman in the 80s versus today mm -hmm. and i write crystal she is a very proud italian american woman and the story is set in providence rhode island which is where i live and there's a you know very big italian american population here a lot of pride and culture um, in fact, the hill, Federal Hill, is where my main character is from, which is a big, it's still an Italian neighborhood. In fact, when the ladies were just here on book tour, we went and had a delicious Italian meal on the hill. 
Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so Crystal um, is sort of, you know, the HBIC, yes, the head bitch in charge. Yes. She, <laughs> um, like, I don't want to get the university. I like get them switched. Okay. And she, um, her husband, who tragically has also died like everyone else's, um, had sort of started the law firm. And so in a lot of ways, she, you know, supported them as he built it. So she feels like she's owed a lot and she's got a lot of opinions and she kind of knows the scene and knows some of the mob affiliated clients a little bit. And so that plays into her storyline too. But for me, she's just, you know, as a writer, sometimes you do have certain characters where the voice just comes in strong and like for good or bad. Like I've written other books where like the character's voice was so loud and like drove me crazy because they were like nuts or whatever. But in this case, <laughs> Crystal's a little nuts, but fun nuts. Like she's, um, you know, just bossy and brassy and just like comes hard charging into every conversation. And so she's just a lot of fun to write. And I can hear her voice and the narrator and the audiobooks does such a great job too. So I really am like hearing her voice now when I'm writing. <laughs> yeah. Crystal had some of the best lines in both books, actually. She wow. was hysterical. And I write Camille, who um, is kind of a trophy wife, not kind of, she is a trophy wife. <laughs> She's married to one of the older um, partners in the law firm who dies in the plane. Um, but she is secretly at the start of book one, Young Rich Widow, she is secretly having an affair with another partner who is married to Justine, Kate's character. Um, and that it's not really a spoiler because that comes out pretty quickly. Um, so she's, you know, she's the type of woman who's used to using her body and her looks to get whatever she wants. Um, and that's part of her character journey in these books is, you know, um, figuring out that she's got some brains in there as well and figuring out how to use those instead of uh, batting her eyelashes and uh, pushing up her boobs to get <laughs> to get a <laughs> I mean, she does do that still too, but she yeah. still does that for sure. Yeah. Well, it happens. It is the eighties after all. Yeah. yeah. It's for powers for good. Not exactly. easily. Yeah. yeah. And you guys, we have just gobs of questions about like, how did this all come about? How did you pick your characters? You kind of the origin story of all this. So can somebody tell us how this all came about, please? We'll let yeah. Vanessa do it. Yeah. So um, I was very lonely in 2020 in the pandemic, and I had heard that Audible was buying short stories and I had never written a short story and I didn't want to fail at something. So I thought, well, I can write a book. What if I got three co-authors? We all wrote 20,000 words and it was a whole novel and Audible was just crazy enough to do it. And we actually um, had like the best time writing it. We each... Um, I kind of, the premise kind of comes from even my real life. Like my husband's a lawyer and he was a, as a partner at a law firm. And he just sort of casually mentioned one day, like, yeah, you know, the other partners, like we probably shouldn't travel together. Cause if our plane goes down, like, you know, the spouses would like inherit the law firm. And I was like, what? And my little plot brain was like, Ooh, that's interesting. So that has been with me for years. And so that was sort of that. And then I thought eighties. Yes. And this idea that these four women who would never be friends, suddenly are thrown together. And I was lucky enough that Kate and Kim and Lane were into it um, and created these incredible characters um, to go along with it. Awesome. So did you guys, like, did somebody, did you decide, like, these are the four characters and this is what they're all about? Or did you let each person develop their own character? Vanessa gave us, like, names and very basic, um, like information about them, like Meredith is bisexual and she was in a secret relationship with the only female partner in the law firm. So I knew that and I knew the name, um, but then everything else we just kind of brainstormed and iterated and like, it's hard to, what's so fun about this collaborative process is it's hard to even remember like who had what idea. It's all just together now. <laughs> yeah. But we definitely all put a little bit of ourselves into our characters like Camille is from the South. I, I didn't plan that actually going in. But then when I sat down to write her first chapter, I'm like, boy, she talks like a Southerner. And I heard her voice and she has a little bit of that accent. So that came out. And then Kate's character is um, half black and half 
Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, and Kate is half black and half Irish. Irish. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, we all put a little bit of our, our mm -hmm. own selves into the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> Very cool. And so how did your collaboration, like you did it by Zoom, obviously, because you're you're from completely different locations, right? right? Oh, yeah. Vanessa and Kate live driving distance from each other, but still it's a few okay. hours. And then uh, okay. Lane's in Chicago and I'm all over the place. So yeah, it was all Zoom. And it was also 2020. So yeah. we could have been next door and it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we could have done it in the backyard, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, we spent, we spent probably a good two weeks hammering out the plot just on day long zooms. And we would, you know, take bathroom breaks and lunch breaks and just kind of, um, just keep going. I mean, we did that for a good two weeks, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. after that, we, uh, we just started, started writing and we would still have weekly zooms to talk about, you know, everything that we had written to go over it, to edit it, to talk through our next four chapters. But when you're four authors and you're each writing a chapter a week, it goes super fast. Mm -hmm. We wrote it this. It seems less, less daunting. Yeah. <laughs> so how long yeah. did it take? Way less daunting. It was a 12 week yeah. book. I mean, we wrote it in 12 yeah. weeks. Wild. And That's it had wild. been edited four times. So, I mean, it was, it was not only, I mean, it wasn't a crappy first draft. It was like in really good shape. It was yeah. odd. It was like, yeah. Huh. Our editor was like, hey, could we switch this? Actually, she did kill a couple of our uh, cuss words, a lot yeah. of our cuss words. Fine. <laughs> but it was a lot of, you know, like, oh, here's a misspelling or here's two the does or, you know, things like that. It was, it yeah. Was, I mean, normally lot, your edit letter after the first read is a lot, a lot, lot, lot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that was lucky. Congratulations, that's awesome. <laughs> Here's a question: Were you guys all friends first before? I mean, you guys all knew each other, right? We met like at Thriller Fest, or I think I I saw I remember I saw Kate on a panel at Thriller Fest, but I don't think I actually talked to her. It was my debut year, and I was probably very intimidated. <laughs> like she's so <laughs> fancy and famous. So like, yeah, I was I knew who all of you were and everything, but. Um, we've become friends over the course of the process. Yeah. 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 Nice. And another question is, are, do you guys have another widow book in the works? Here's hoping. <laughs> We're crossing it all. Yeah. I think I can say like the dream has been that we do four books because each book kind of centers like there, it's a very ensemble based, but like in the first book, Justine Kate's character starts and ends the book and she has the biggest, character arc and then in book two it's Camille and so we would love to do like one for each widow I think would be very we have, very we have kind of rough plots in our heads for mm -hmm. books three and four I mean we have plans mm -hmm. hopefully uh hopefully it'll they'll all pan out but yeah yeah that sounds it's great exciting. that sounds logical to me here we have another one um, oh, yeah. Do you guys have all the same publisher or editor? And I don't think we've mentioned that yet, Sharon. So thanks for the question. So not for our individual books. Um, you know, our own individual books, all of us have different publishers um, in as much as you can with only there being four publishers. But, you know, the big five. But we're at different imprints and different places. And um, But for this, we do all work together with the same. Um, and it was been great because you know um i now i work with two other have worked with two other publishers but source books who put out young rich widows was a publisher i had wanted to work with for a while i mean they do like ashley winstead and mm -hmm. so julie clark so many great um authors and so um and then um audible is like incredible to work with they're so creative i mean the promo especially for desperate deadly widows has been next level so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we feel really lucky with both editors and publishers and just seeing how different people work and how they publicize things has been really fun and mm -hmm. informative, really. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You guys you guys got a a billboard. We have a billboard. A billboard. Multiple billboards, a don't billboard. we? We have one yeah. in LA and one in both New coast. <laughs> both coasts. Amazing. We have and both billboards. Big time. Yeah. I think over the last two weeks I've texted Kara and Kimberly. I just heard another ad for uh, yeah. Desperate Deadly Widows while listening to my podcasts. 
Netflix or watching We're something on, on Hulu. Hulu. That's you amazing, said, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like really getting the word out. Others. So that's exciting. <laughs> What was that? I think they're stalking you, maybe in a friendly way. <laughs> friendly way. That's right. Every other ghost. There you guys are. <laughs> it's great. And if there's any true crime fans, like Morbid Podcast is going to do a special mm -hmm. listening episode of um, Desperate Deadly Widows. So we'll be doing fun stuff with that. My friend is obsessed with that Ooh. podcast, and I've never felt, felt cooler than when she saw that. <laughs> yeah, super cool. Love Morbid. Yeah, they're great. They are great. So, really good. so, okay, obviously a big, oh, how are we doing on time? Oh, no, can we do the quiz? Do we have a couple well, minutes? Oh, no. We have to do it really fast. Okay, and this is not okay. for you pillars, it's for the audience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so, so uh, yeah. go ahead, Heather. So we, we have some questions for the audience. So drop your answers and we'll see how well do you know your 80s trivia. So the first question is, who played Johnny Castle in Dirty Dancing? Come on, Anybody guys. Come on, you got to have some answers there. I love Anybody this Anybody dropping anything? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. you're Googling, I think, one of the two. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh Castle, there we go. Dirty Here they come. Okay. <laughs> what does VHS stand for? I didn't remember that. Oh, I didn't either. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, and then this one we have to ask. Um, where did it go? Oh, I can do it's on the script. Yeah, do it. Yeah, okay. do it. The first mobile phone way in 1983. Oh. <laughs> we have a cell phone in uh, Desperate Deadly Widows, and it's a big one. She like has to drag yeah. it up and it's like <laughs> on her desk. So, how much did it weigh? Is the question? Yeah. And video yeah, those are all, all fun questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the, the last one is a nod to our decor, I mean, our outfits. Okay, who was the first female artist to sell more than 5 million albums? Okay, that's okay. So whoever has like the, we'll try to find a winner for some swag in all of this, but keep guessing, I love it. I love the phone that weighs yeah. 30 pounds. No. <laughs> All right. So it's now time for the killer giveaway. So the widows are giving away four paperback copies of Young Rich Widows tonight to five lucky U.S. Well, okay, four paperbacks to five winners. That would be awkward. Okay. <laughs> I believe it should be four and four, but we'll just say that. Okay. Doesn't matter if you're watching us on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. We scour the comments everywhere we stream. But please make sure to tell us where you're from. The question is, which one of the widow's books is out now in paperback? That's an easy one. Okay. So <laughs> there might be hints floating out on the screen. Okay. So it's to you. Yeah. So the killers, we love our indie bookstores and we want to support them in any way we can. That's why we ask every killer author to tell us their favorite. So widows, you have picked your collective favorite killer bookstore, which happens to be Inkfish Books in Rhode Island. Can you tell us why you chose this one as your killer bookseller? So I think Lisa, the owner, is in the Facebook chat. She was earlier. So. Oh, yeah. Hi, Lisa. We just we just had our launch event there. It's a woman-owned bookstore. Mm -hmm. um, she's a huge supporter of authors and local events and local business owners. And she is also the queen of the hand sell. Like if you walk in and you want to know a title, she's got it. And she's read almost everything in her store. She takes it very seriously, but with fun, of course. So we love Lisa. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, we'll be dropping the link to Young Rich Widows in the comments so you can order that book and any others from your wish list. And she has signed copies. Yeah, signed by all four of us, which is like a collector's item because it's hard to get us all in one place. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So run to Inkfish uh, Books um, website and maybe you can snag a oh yes. a, a quadruple signed book. Oh, here. Lisa Valentino, I am here. Wait, where'd she go? There. Yay, Lisa. Oh, hi, Lisa. Thanks for being here. Thanks for what you do. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Okay, and as much as we'd love to invite every amazing killer author to be featured on our shows, there are only so many fantastic authors and books and only three of us. But we can't let this evening go by without celebrating a very special author with a brand new release. I should probably take this off so it looks more not 80s. Okay. The Vacancy in Room 10 by Serafina Glass, which is out today. The Vacancy in Room 10 follows two women at a rundown apartment complex. Anna is trying to piece together the truth after her husband called her, said he'd killed someone, and then turned up dead himself. Sounds good. I will drop the link in the comments if you would like to check out that book. It's very good. And membership has its privileges. So if you're on Facebook, check out our private members only group called the Killer Author Clubhouse. This is a place for the really hardcore killers where we share book recommendations, have all sorts of murderous fun and hold giveaways. Every episode, we choose a name from the Killer Author Clubhouse hat to win a piece of Killer Author Clubhouse swag. So t-shirts, mugs, candles, totes, hats, all of which can be found at killerauthorclub.com. And this week's winner is Robin Rickliff Schrader. So congratulations, Ro congratulations, Robin. Make sure you contact one of the killers and we will get some killer swag sent your way. Yay. All right, you guys. And for you widows, I have some good news. You have survived the Killer Author Club. Congratulations. I know I have it as this is over my face, but <laughs> we're so thankful for you guys showing up here. And except for Kate, we're, you know, we don't know where she is, but we do. <laughs> we do. Having fabulous fun. But anyway, but thank you all for being here. And we love the widows. It's it's such a great concept and such fun stories. So congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, the time went way too fast, but that, that does it for tonight's episode. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks with the one and only Lisa Scottolini and the truth about the Devlins. That will be on April 23rd at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific. In the meantime, please find us wasting entirely too much time on all the social media spots, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. And for all information, that you need for times, upcoming schedules, past episodes, recipes, merch, surf to killerauthorclub.com. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Bye. I guess I'm a killer through our love and